As soon as the girl awakens, somebody will have to explain everything to her. She knows nothing about the disasters of the last 20 years. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shameless action movie ripoffs. How disgusting! Get me not bad. For this list, we're looking at the most obvious examples of action movie copycats, or homages, as they might like to say. We're not saying these movies are bad, per se, but they are all chasing another movie's ideas. Do you know of any we missed? Did you enjoy any of these movies? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Hun Hun Bollywood boasts a few infamous copycat films, such as the 1994 Nightmare on Elm Street knockoff, Mahakal. However, 1973's Hun Hun is one of the most memorable. <laughs> Essentially a remake of Dirty Harry, with a similar plot about a crazed serial killer, it gives the story a new spin by taking breaks for comic relief, singing, and dancing. It's tonally odd for sure, but still fascinating in the way that only 70s Bollywood action flicks can be. For anyone who's curious, at the time of writing, it is still streaming on Netflix. Number 9. Vashi Khan The biggest films in Turkish exploitation cinema are often better known to English speakers by colloquial nicknames like Turkish Death Wish and Turkish Star Wars. Or in the case of Vashi Khan, meaning wild blood as Turkish First Blood. The film doesn't shy away from closely following the plot to First Blood, particularly when it comes to the mental state of its protagonist, John Rambo. However, Turkish First Blood does amp up the WTF factor by including wannabe zombies and a surprising amount of violence and gore. All the while, Turkish action star Junaid Arkin preens and pumps up the testosterone to 11. It's honestly pretty awesome. Number 8. The Dragon Lives Again There's perhaps no corner of the exploitation world as weird or as shameless as the genre known as Bruce-ploitation. Produced in order to capitalize on the tragic loss of Bruce Lee, these films often found some way to work Lee's death into the plot. He was at the very height of his career. His most recent movie had broken all previous box office records. The world indeed has lost one of its greatest heroes. 1980's The Clones of Bruce Lee was one of the better and more ridiculous examples, but 1977's The Dragon Lives Again is even more audacious. What on earth could it be? <laughs> After all, it isn't every day that Bruce Lee teams up with Kane from Kung Fu and Popeye to battle James Bond, Dracula, and the Godfather for control of hell. Yep, it's as crazy as it sounds, and basically tells intellectual property laws to go pound sand. No, please have mercy on me! Oh, Bruce Lee, I like you. Oh, please don't kill me. Uh, I tell you what, you can be the king if you like. Please, you mustn't kill me. Please have mercy on me. Number 7. Robo War the Italian film industry of the 1970s and 80s was somewhat notorious for going all in. This was reflected in their special effects, some out there lapses in film logic, and let's say very familiar elements from popular movies. <laughs> Robo War was a little bit of Predator with a dash of Robocop for good measure all delivered on a very low budget by collaborators Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso. Both of these men had worked in the rip-off business for years, delivering cheap and trashy fun. Now I'm gonna get to you, you bastard. Robo War story about doomed commandos being stalked through the jungle might sound awfully familiar, but we'll say this, the movie does know how to have a good time. I feel the same damn way. But we need them alive. Number 6. Shocking Dark 
Action fans will likely point to James Cameron's Aliens as one of the best sci-fi action films of all time. All right, sweethearts, what are you waiting for? Breakfast in bed? Another glorious day in the core. Fans of exploitation action films might point to Shocking Dark as one of the most shameless. This film from Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso, again, was actually marketed as Terminator 2 in some countries. In actuality, the plot is more indebted to aliens than Terminator. You bastard! Set in Venice, it follows commandos who are attacked by biomechanical monsters in a dark, claustrophobic setting. There's even an Ellen Ripley of sorts. I'd like you all to meet Dr. Sarah Drumble. And this is Samuel Fuller from the Tubular Corporation. Number 5. Robo Vampire This ripoff isn't your average exploitation picture, but rather the work of one Godfrey Ho, an infamous Hong Kong filmmaker with a very specific style. Ho was the king of cut and splice cinema, taking forgotten or unfinished films, shooting new scenes with different actors, and dubbing the dialogue to create a new storyline. I'm sorry to bother you. Is everything all right? Go. It's okay. Everything's under control. Cobbling together two low budget movies, Robo Vampire packs in hopping vampires, a cyborg commando, and a kidnapping subplot within its 90 minute runtime. <laughs> It's only the beginning. It gets much worse than this. The result is an experience that's never original, but also never boring. Number four, Karate Warrior. That's right, not just a karate kid, but a karate warrior. I'm not chicken. Are you? This Italian martial arts film from director Fabrizio De Angelis follows the story of Daniel LaRusso beat for beat from being attacked and humiliated to his friendship and training with a new sensei. Like fish. Now you catch fish. There's even a tournament for Daniel, sorry, we mean Anthony, to win at the end. What's truly astounding isn't so much that Karate Warrior was released in theaters in Italy or on VHS in North America, but that it received no less than five sequels. Maybe so, but I'm gonna take you along with me. Number three, 1990. The Bronx Warriors. Post-apocalyptic dystopian films were big business throughout the 1980s, thanks largely to the success of the Mad Max franchise and John Carpenter's Escape from New York. Director Enzo Castellari took full advantage when he helmed 1990 The Bronx Warriors back in 1982, produced by Karate Warriors Fabrizio De Angelis. You're playing with fire. I know, and I love it. Together with screenwriters Dardano Sacchetti and Elisa Briganti, Castellari created a movie that mashed together all these tropes for gloriously trashy consumption. But nothing is worse than this hellhole. New York City is a lawless war zone? Check. Colorfully dressed street gangs battling for supremacy? Double check. 1990 The Bronx Warriors may not have had the foresight to set its story more than eight years in the future, but it did know how to be entertaining. Is it a sin? A sin? <laughs> Hardly. Maybe I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Number two, Ator the Fighting Eagle. The sword and sorcery subgenre was another supremely popular sandbox in which many enterprising filmmakers sought to play. So did Conan return the wayward daughter of King Osric to her home. Arnold Schwarzenegger's work in Conan the Barbarian made a lot of people eager to see how they looked in sandals, with Ator the Fighting Eagle serving as one of the earliest examples of a Conan knockoff. In the heart of that volcano, shadows, lies the shield of Mordor. It possesses magic powers, and I must have it in order to fight the Ancient One. Miles O'Keefe is a big man with some equally big hair, and seemed more than up to the challenge of flexing his pecs for a quick paycheck. The character of Ator would be brought back in three sequels. What are you saying, fool? The last of these, Quest for the Mighty Sword, was also known as Troll 3 in some countries. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Ark of the Sun God. Because every good Indiana Jones knockoff needs an ark. Just like the professor described it. She imagined it. 
strike commando. Reb Brown should have won the Academy Award for yelling in this Rambo ripoff. Warriors of the Year 2072. Another film in the spirit of Mad Max and Escape from New York. This is Hank Martinez live from Rome, Italy with another flash for WBS viewers all over the world. Ape, not to be confused with King Kong. See Ape. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 2019. After the Fall of New York Sergio Martino and his crew were clearly going for their own take on Escape from New York with this sci-fi film, although there are again elements of Mad Max too. However, they also went with the unique plot of the hero trying to protect the last fertile woman on Earth. Planet Earth has been reduced to a garbage-strewn radioactive desert, inhabited by humans devoid of all hope for a future. If that sounds curiously familiar, then you've read P.D. James's novel Children of Men or watched Alfonso Cuaron's adaptation. Mind you, After the Fall of New York actually updates James's book by almost a decade. I'm still very much alive, and so is the Pan-American Confederacy. Even though it might feel very familiar by now, Martino's film is actually pretty fun and worth the watch, especially with friends and some cheesy pizza. All right, my love. You win. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.